This is Milking Time with Joel Salatin. A new show I'm trying with guests. We're going to interview the man himself, Joel Salatin. First, a fun game. I'm going to start easy on you. What is this, Joel? A uh, milking stool. It's a milking stool. 100 year old grandpa's yeah. old milking yeah. stool. Yeah. Milking so, stool. grandpa used to milk 15 cows by hand every day. Sure. Grandma would help him, 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would just get it done by hand. Yeah. yeah. Yep. My dad milked by hand, I milked by hand, my children milked by hand, so four generations. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Now you're mostly you're mostly beef, to be fair. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're not running dairy. How long has it been since you milked? Uh, since <clears throat> we milked a family cow, probably 30 years. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's very good. <laughs> is, it, is it like riding a bike? Are you going to just get in there and just go yeah, to town? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, we'll yeah. see. I've helped people learn how to milk. And, I, you know, if you have a, a like a calf where a cow is being... Uh, whatever you got a problem, you have to milk a cow to stomach tube a hard a, a calf that's hard to get going or what okay. like I've, I've milked. You want to have fun, milk a beef cow, <laughs> milk a beef cow that's wild. You know, How do you that, milk that's a beef not cow? that's well, you you, you get her, you over. have a very strong shoot. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have a strong You're shoot, and a strong shoot. head gate. Okay, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. What's this? All I'm thinking of is hobbles. It's hobbles. It's hobbles. This is yeah. another yeah. hundred year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grandpa's yeah. hobbles. Yeah, and this yeah. would be used mm -hmm. in our case mm -hmm. if if she was a kicker. If she was a kicker, mm -hmm. and it would maybe train her not to kick. Um, it also be if you need to treat her. Like there's sometimes we need to treat. We put some uh, an injection in her teeth mm -hmm. if she's got mastitis or something like that. A cow can't kick. She can't physically kick with both legs. Yes, because she no. has to keep one on the ground. Nope. So if you so if you tie the two legs together, she can't move one very far because she has to keep her balance with the other one. Yes, that's so, right. So that's why the that's why the hobbles work. That's right. Yeah. I'm getting a little harder because <laughs> you're, you're a beef man, not necessarily a family yeah. man. Yeah. Well, that's a. Uh, um, that's to, to put one yes. squirt from each teat in yep. to check for back to somatic cell count. Back oh my count. goodness, he's getting good. Yeah. Checking for mastitis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So filling those up, 10 squirts yeah. of this. If it solidifies like snot, it's right. mastitis. If, if it stays, absorbs real quick. Yeah. We always man, used to, you're used good. To little, I didn't know little, if you'd get that one. Yeah, we, we used a little card. There was a little card and it had mm -hmm. yellow, four yellow um, things on it, and if you squirt it and the yellow turned, okay. turned yep. blue or red or something, then she had mastitis. So it was, like, it was a color, yeah, little color coded card. And you, almost. that's good. I've seen that. Okay, man, you passed the test. Good job. <laughs> All right, you ready I'm to not milk as this dumb cow? As you thought, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to get you, man. Okay, well, we're gonna put you on this side. You milk here. Mm -hmm. I'll milk on this side. We've already cleaned, washed her. She's ready to go. I'm gonna mm -hmm. put you this pail. Uh, maybe we'll get you to also, this is our reservoir pail, so yep. we get a little bit, because she's not going to kick, she doesn't really kick, but flies, you know, she steps, she mm -hmm. moves. Mm -hmm. All right, so Joel, go ahead, I'll let you get down there, get comfortable, try to get a few sque squeezes. Mm -hmm. are we, are, am, I'm, little, little. I'm doing the two next to me, you're doing the two next to you. Yes, sir. That's the plan. And we'll both look forward towards mm -hmm. the cameras. Yeah. You're doing pretty good. Oh, easy, lady. Easy, easy, easy. Good. Maybe I was going too aggressively. <laughs> She's not used to gas being such a good milker. Oh yeah, we can we can milk just fine. You can milk out a cow in about less than less than ten minutes. Okay. You know they used to they used to sell cows. Um, by how how easy they milked. Mm. In other words, a, a cow that that milked real easy, you know, commanded a higher price. Mm -hmm. Today they don't care too much. Do I need to move that bucket over for you a little no, more? No, it's fine. I'll feed it. So for those of you who don't know, tell us who you are, Joel. Who would you say you are? You meet you meet somebody at a mixer party. They don't know any any, any, any they have never heard of you. Who are you? <coughs> I'm a Christian libertarian environmentalist capitalist lunatic farmer. That's a good way to start a conversation. 
So then where does it go from there? Have you ever introduced yourself that way? Oh yeah, and all the time. That's kind of my that's kind of my uh, my <laughs> moniker now. Yeah, it's a real conversation opener because it blows so many stereotypes. What made what made you want to make a living farming? You're a professional farmer. You farm in a regenerative way. You make a good living for you and many other families. What made you want to do that in the first place? You know, I when you get when you when you get older some of the childhood memories you have actually become more poignant because you can't remember them all and so you you actually um, uh, things that in your background you you weren't thinking about then become more whatever more poignant mm. you know today and um, so <clears throat> We bought this farm. I was four years old when we came to the farm. It was the most eroded, gullied rock pile in the in the whole region, and um, and so it it was a place of, of of barrenness, if you will. Well, my grandfather, my dad's dad, from Indiana, had a he was a master gardener. He was a early subscriber to Rodale's Organic Gardening and Farming magazine, and. Um, he had a magnificent, very large garden, probably a quarter acre, you know, which is a big garden. And it was surrounded by a T-topped uh, grape, a Concord grape trellis. <clears throat> and we would go up there. We, we could never go up early in the season because we were making hay and different things. We'd go up there late in the season when the, always when the grapes were ripe. And as a child, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old, I would go out there in that garden and compared to our hard clay, hard yeah. clay clumps and and uh, you know, rock pile, just walking into that great arbor surrounded quarter acre of abundance was just, I don't know, I get teary talking about it. It was, it was just, it just touched my soul and I, I wanted to be a part of that abundance mm. and, and, and viscerally participate in it. Mm. And so, um, I, you know, uh, does one thing stand out? No, but just that, that just, being able to to step into that abundant womb was was a powerful thing and I, I, it never got away from me take that horse out good and then let's set that up here and let's let's do the next one without milking you're milking so good we're gonna we're going too fast. So we'll do this next one. Just look at the camera. I'm not used to it's fooling good, around man. with this stuff, man. It's, it's like chores. Let's get done and get in for breakfast. You tomorrow. This is, is he's making it look easy. All right. All right. Well, so what? So dreaming of becoming a professional farmer, making this your living, and now here you are. I've been doing it for decades. What was the biggest struggle? Maybe for you, and what is the biggest struggle for aspiring farmers? Well, you know, for us. Uh, probably the biggest struggle early on was was capital you know I don't come from a wealthy family we didn't have money and so we pretty much bootstrapped it and so you know we didn't I remember dad and I early on when we were gonna build something we said well you know where are we gonna get the lumber and so we would scrounge around the community and find find some farmer that wanted to tear down a dilapidated old barn that was half falling down we tore down three barns, you know, over our over our time, um, just to get lumber to build things, and um, so you know, there's a lot of lot of we, we just we just had to really watch the pennies, and and you know I'm really thankful for that now because you know when you're when you're hungry it makes you really creative, mm. and um, a lot of our creativity and and you know low cost infrastructure is because we couldn't just go out and buy what we wanted or throw money at mm -hmm. things. Probably the, the next the next big, uh, you know, whatever, threat weakness was simply um, not, not knowing enough people with expertise where I was weak. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a great, um, I'm very creative but I'm not a crackerjack mechanic. I can't rebuild an engine. I, I don't even like to change the oil in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we had a welder and we, you know, we could, we could build stuff. 
we, we could weld and fabricate and things, but <clears throat> but I'm not a I'm not a master mechanic, and so um, so it was a it was always a a struggle to you know so so you so you buy used equipment, you buy old used equipment because you can't afford new. Well, then you're going to have breakdowns, and then you spend money on 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 repair because you don't know how to you know do a head job on a on a 40 year old Oliver tractor you know what I'm talking about that yeah and, and so that that mechanical um, that mechanical whatever lack of skill um, was a you know was, was a thing so yeah. uh, boy today today to have a full-time staff mechanic where I can go out and break things and bring them in and drop them off at the shop and know that they'll be fixed Three times faster and t five times better than I could. Yeah, is just I can't even uh, I can't even describe what a what a what free how freeing that is. It's just amazing. Was that hard for you to get out of this? I can do everything mindset that sometimes homesteaders uh, you know, I, and farmers get into. Yeah, I, I like think it's hard everything. for every farmer. Yeah, I, I I think I think all farmers struggle with you know uh, I I can do everything, and um, the, the fact is that the. The gifts and talents necessary to for a successful business don't all grow on one pair of legs. Okay. And uh, when people ask me today if there's one thing I could do differently, mm -hmm. go back and do differently, my my stock answer is, I wish I'd have developed partnerships and a team earlier, yeah. than just trying to you know bull my way through, and do everything myself. All right. Let's smoke again. So along kind of similar line, what was the biggest? What would you say the biggest sacrifice that you and Teresa have had to make that, that maybe people don't think about when they're they're imagining all the unicorns parting rainbows, they're gonna go out and farm and it's gonna be all wonderful. But what, what are the sacrifices that you have given up that maybe somebody in a normal, let's just call it a normal career or a traditional career or whatever, what have you sacrificed? Well, for one thing, we, we, st we don't have a TV. We never had a TV. Mm. Uh, we still don't have a TV. And um, I actually think that that, that um, you know, frees up a lot of your time and, uh, and creativity mm. uh, okay. to not have a TV. It, it's, just, it's just a time sucker. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Well, nowadays, though, it's now cool to not have a TV. You didn't have a TV when it was not cool, and that was the only source of entertainment. So now, but, but, but in modern day times, it'd be like you not having, not, not having the internet, or at least being entertained by the internet. Oh, oh absolutely, yeah, because at, at that time, there was no internet, so you couldn't, you couldn't turn off the TV and, 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 and turn on your laptop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or a smartphone. <laughs> So uh, another one was we lived in the we lived in the attic of the of the farmhouse. So you know we have a easy easy lady. You even grabbing the bucket, man. Oh, I yeah. thought after thirty year, years you'd be a little more oh, rusty. Oh no, this is just as it's, it's just <laughs> as no, it's just like a oh you know, yeah easy. Oh. Yeah, no, she's, yeah, she says, Good, can y'all guys finish up here? Yeah. Whoop, oh, there it comes. There it comes. That's the big protest. <laughs> That's when you know she's agitated. Real time, milking time. She's on that. <clears throat> she's, she's gone from. Hey, where's my fight? Let me be right back, guy. Okay. She's okay. gone from one of our worst pastures to our best. When Temple Grandin uh, came to our farm last year and did a day seminar, uh, I mean, it was it was such a privilege to have her. But um, she made the point that you know all of us, all of us are we're never in the moment as humans. Hmm. We've got something else on our mind. Yeah, that's true. All, we, you know, we're thinking about whatever the dental appointment, the soccer game, the something. I, I, I wiped off the manure that was on this bucket. Okay, thank you. And um, it should be good. I don't know how much you want to do. Oh, oh, you're prepared. I'm prepared. I'm pulling our tail up. For we used to always just milk on deep bedding, and if they yeah. pooped, it just went yep. into deep bedding. You just yep. uh, turned around a little bit, and yeah, this is 
this is uh, kind of going first class. <laughs> anyway, she, she said she said that um, that people are never in the moment because we have stuff on our minds, mm. but animals don't have anything on mm. their minds, and so they're always a hundred percent in the moment. Wow. And so, um, and so they're they're completely consumed with with the moment. Mm -hmm. And so she said, for example, if you go out to your cows every day and in one day you wear sunglasses, mm -hmm. they're all agitated <clears throat> because, well, because they notice oh. the sunglasses. Or if you wear a hat with a Farm Bureau logo on it and you go out tomorrow with a, with a New Holland logo on your hat, mm -hmm. they, they notice that. I mean, they're that, they're that yeah. in the moment because yeah. they ha they have no dental appointments. Yeah. They're not worried about <laughs> uh, you know uh, passing a bureaucratic compliance license test, <laughs> and and uh, and they're totally. And, and to, that was just really good for me. To, That's good. I, I thought it was really profound yeah. to help you to realize how. Yeah. So this cow, we're all thinking this is cool, you know, and we're thinking what we're going to ask questions later to me or how yeah. the tour is going to go yeah. this afternoon and do the cameras have batteries in them? You know, we're, yeah. all these things. She has none of that. None of that's clutter in her head. Yeah. All Good she point. is is in the moment, and I know that. It's different today, and I don't like it because it's different. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get it done. <laughs> <laughs> easy, lady. Easy, easy, honey pot. What's her name? This is Flossie. Flossie, easy Flossie. Yeah. Easy Flossie. All right, just a couple more. Just What's the biggest reward then? Maybe you knew it was going to be that reward. Maybe it was a surprise. Oh, the biggest reward is is seeing the land respond to our care. We got a lot of clover here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, see these Goodness. Pastures? I mean, this, this is, this is pasture. This is premium. Is this the original land? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. It didn't look like this when we came, I can tell you. That's what I was going to say. So look, this is what? 50% clover? Yeah. 60, oh, yeah. 70? Yeah, plantain. Uh, There's bugs everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Plantain. What else? Well, fescue, orchard grass, red clover. You've uh, grazed something right here. Tail. Yeah, yeah, this is where well, the, was the, here. the sheep and the turkeys have just okay. gone through here. So what did this look like if we would have walked here? Um, back when you could have walked the whole thing and never set foot on a piece of vegetation. Are you serious? Now what year was that? 1961. You know, the fact that I grew up on this, you know, this gully, this gully rock pile that, well, <clears throat> you know, when I, the, the first thing a farm kid you okay? Mm -hmm. She's not. Easy lady. Easy. We'll, we'll be done here shortly. We'll be done here shortly. So I can remember 12, 13 raking hay and a field. We have a 12 acre field there behind the barn and and uh, you know we it would take me like a dozen swaths of the rake to make a little tiny windrow, we'd mo we'd, and we'd get 100 bales of hay off of that field. Now we get 1,200, and one swath makes hay so thick you can't even step over it, of the windrow. And it's that, it's that level of, of just incredible abundance, and know that, that our, our massage, our massage of this ecological umbilical has, has enabled nature to do that for us is just, um, that's what gets me up every day. Uh, I mean, how, how, few, how few people get to viscerally participate in the healing of the, of, of our, of, of the earth? Mm. You know, we don't get to. The, the best you can do is you send a check to Nature Conservancy, you know, a lot of people, and, um, and to, to be able to actually be a, a visceral participant in that process is just, a privilege and an honor beyond anything you can imagine. Mm. This, this might be a, the same, you might have an uh, answer for this, but your dad's been passed away for quite some time now. Yeah. And he's helped get, you know, he bought the farm. Yep. And I imagine, was he proud of you? Yes, very, very. Mm -hmm. And I miss him every day. Yeah, he died in 1988. And mm -hmm. we'd been, we, you know, we came back. Teresa and I start full time September 24, 1982. Mm -hmm. I left a newspaper job, yeah. and um, 
and um, you know, so he we were only we weren't even six years into it when he passed away. Mm. You know, the older I get, the smarter mm. he was. Mm. And uh, boy, I miss his counsel and his wisdom. And yeah, he he was he was an accountant by trade, and he did a lot of farm accounting in the area. Yeah, and. Um, and even even at five years in, we we had passed. We we said you know we, we by that time Teresa and I knew we were going to make it, mm. and um, and and Dad said, you know, he, of course he would never even tell us who his clients were, mm. but he just said our 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 actual financial situation was better than any Aww. farm client that he had, Aww. and he had some big ones. You know, they drove big trucks. Had big infrastructure, yeah. fancy tractors, but yeah. our actual financial resiliency position was better than than any of those. And boy, that was really wonderful to hear. So my dad passed away in November. It's mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I miss the most is just him being able to be proud of something. Yeah. So I accomplished something good. And I'll know he's not watching the blog and he can't see it. And I won't hear him saying, Right. Good job. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Does that ever go away? No. Never goes away. So you. No. Nope. Welcome. You still Be glad you had him this long. <laughs> so you'll, 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 you'll still have moments yep. of accomplishment and, you're, and you'll have that, that feeling. You can't, you can't shun it. It comes. There's not a child in the world that ever gets done craving parental affirmation. You get the same satisfaction from your mom who's still alive? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what's if your dad could come down from heaven for an hour? Uh-huh. What what of your accomplishments since he's gone would you really want to see him oh, see? I'd, yeah, I'd want him I just I'd want him to see the, the fields, see the soil. You know, mm. just see see the, the the earthworms and the yeah. abundance. I mean Yeah. I mean, he, he would go off to work and leave my brother and I, a, you know, a, a chart of jobs to do during the day in the summertime. Yeah. And uh, I can remember like yesterday, you know, that there was a there was a, an hour a day, every every single day of the summer, chopping thistles. Today, you couldn't find enough to chop in a, in a half a day on the whole hmm. farm. <laughs> and uh, did he know he was right? Yeah. Then? Yeah, he knew or he was, was right. Was he hoping he was right? No, he knew he was right. He just okay. didn't. He just didn't live long enough to see it. I'm done on my side. Okay. I'm going to keep finishing her because she does not have a calf on her and we guys, we got to, we got to milk her all the way out. You ever hear it? I know Joel, you've heard this. Those in the audience, milk her for all she's worth. That's what I'm doing right now. You ever right. heard that saying? Right. Well, if you, if you don't milk her all the way out, yeah. then, then she doesn't respond to the need. Mm, and so, yeah. so then she doesn't produce as much milk yeah. because she doesn't think she needs as much milk. Mm -hmm. So she actually, by milking her out, it actually encourages her yeah. to, to offer to, uh, to produce more because yeah. she feels like um, she needs more. And have you ever heard that saying, that they kick the bucket? <laughs> Yep. 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 I'm watching. If this, that's why Joel and I are grabbing this bucket every time she moves. Because if you kick this bucket, it's she kicks this bucket, it's over. Yeah. Okay. One last question. You were on the Joe Rogan podcast, and you said something really profound. I wish they could have just repeated it, put it in slow motion. Uh, I forget what, what how he was probing you, but basically you said two, him, two hours and twenty minutes, and only yeah. said one thing profound. You, 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 Man, that's I, not a good he, law. He but that's not Joe. good average. <laughs> He should have made a Joe Rogan. I mean, you had plenty of stuff. Don't get me wrong. He should have made one of his clip videos of this one. But it was like, I hope people caught that because you you said you kind of said it casual. But it's he was you were talking about some of the world's problems, and you said, you know what? I can't solve all the world's problems. I can't solve all the problems, but I can solve some. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I bring that up here to continue to communicate that. Right. So how does how did the young people watching? Um, wrap their mind around that and there's a lot going on right now and there will be a lot going on 10 years from now when yeah. people are watching this what can you say impart some wisdom to us in, in that expound upon that if you don't mind yeah well um it, it, it part of it is just incrementalism you know you, you never arrive at your destination it's always a journey okay we're good you we pull that out and we'll, we'll just finish talking right. as we sit here. Uh, it's always a journey. It, 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 it's not an arrival. And um, and the other thing is, I think it's important to remember that, that good enough is perfect. Mm. 
Mm. Um, so often, if we can't if we can't solve every extreme thing, we uh, well we don't want to start until we get everything done. And I think computers have actually have actually encouraged this yeah. uh, because a computer, you know, you can't sit down and say, well, I know the sequence to get this is 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 this you know this uh, this this button, this button, this button, this button, and then this happens. I think I'll be creative today and, and, and change that up. Well, you know, the computer's not going to give you the same screen with a different set of button push, you know, sequence. And so I think, I think that some of this, um, some of this paralysis to be able to be satisfied to start something without seeing a clear finish line has been created by the rigidity Mm -hmm. of of a, of a sequential um, of a sequential format in computers mm -hmm. and, um, and and so uh, you know as we look to the future um, you know you can get really really uh, depressed right now there's a lot of unknowns out there but you know uh, uh, the Chinese proverb if everybody will sweep in front of their own house the world would be clean uh, I'm a big believer in that, and 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 Stephen Covey's, um, you know, stay within your sphere of influence. We we can bleed off a lot of emotional energy in worrying about stuff that's outside our sphere of influence. So just milk the cow, pull the weeds, grow your beans, can your you know can your tomatoes. Uh, um, you know, stay focused on what you can do today that will make the world a better place today, and tomorrow will take care of itself. In a lot of ways, that's about that's about the best we can do. That's a good word. Thank you so much, Joel. You did really good. We'll let Flossie out. But uh, thank you. I'm Absolutely. Impressed. I'm impressed. That's your 30 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. That doesn't go away. <laughs>